another dress I've made my gorgeous mum. I'm also showing you some sewing aspects, so keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing. Welcome back if you are always joining me with these fun videos and if it's your first, be very welcome to this channel where you will get a lot of sewing tips and tricks for your own sewing. Today I have another video for you of my Love Through Sewing series which features beautiful things I make my mom or other family members. In this case, my mom. If you're enjoying the frequent sewing content from this channel, consider subscribing. Tap on that bell so you never miss out when I upload a video full of sewing tips and tricks. Also like and comment because I will reply. I've made myself a callus bell dress from itch to stitch at the beginning of the year in March. I hadn't been back home for that long. I was still adjusting to being back home. My husband's health wasn't that great at the time. And when I showed you the initial pattern review for this dress, that I have next to me here. I actually never showed you any sewing footage because I couldn't manage it at the time. But I always knew I wanted to show how to film these bands because they do have a lot of pattern pieces. There are lots of notches to match. It can be a little bit confusing sometimes. So I always knew I wanted to make another dress and film this for you. So that is what I've done for this video, only the dress isn't for me, it's for my mum. What we did while she was here, that she would try on my dress and my dress would be like the muslin, although it's a finished garment, I could assess what changes I needed to make, if any changes needed to be made, you know? At the beginning of the year for my dress, I made a size 12 here at the top and then blended to a 14 at the waist. And then for the skirt pieces, I cut a size 14. Now, when I tried my dress on my mom, her waist is smaller. And so basically for her, when I ended up bringing in the final dress, it ended up being, I would say, from a 12 at the top that I didn't change to a 12. So basically her dress is a straight size 12. Her hips fall into a size 10. But actually, because it's a big full skirt with full pleats, you don't really need to make those adjustments. My mom has wanted to have a dress like this for a long time. She doesn't have one in her wardrobe. She mainly has sheath dresses. So she kept telling me, I want a big full skirt and this fabric is perfect for it. So I have a piece of fabric left to show you before I show you the dress. So it's a rayon, 100% rayon or viscose. And it's just classic black and white. Mum loves black and white, so do I. I probably like it a lot because I've always seen her in lots of black and white. I think it's classic. It can be worn for a very long time. So this is the fabric. Very nice, very drapey. Now, let me tell you a little story, tiny. Growing up, I would sew for my mum all the time. So she would buy, for example, two meters for a dress and I would do whatever it took to have a little piece left over for me so that I could make something for myself as well. So that's what her cheeky little custom teenage seamstress did. <laughs> and why is it different now? The, look at this, I have a little piece left for a cami top. And in Up Close and So Personal, I'm going to show you how I put the pattern pieces to get the four main bodice pieces out of a tiny bit, out of just one length of fabric. Had I not done that, I would have lost this little piece of fabric and I wouldn't be able to have a cami top to match my mum's dress. <laughs> yeah, old habits don't die. <laughs> so as I mentioned, the up close and so personal, you're going to see a budget layer for the bodice to use less fabric. And also all the fun construction of those bands. I'm using linen as well to give the dress stability. I think they need to be out of a more structured fabric. I don't think this rayon would do well with those bands. That's why I do the linen and plus it looks good. So let's hop into that. Don't you think this is starting to wear on me? You've been raining down like it. With this layout, I'm able to get the bodice pieces for the color spell in about less than 50 centimeters or 19 inches. 
So I have the two front pieces there. I have the back pieces flipped. So <laughs> these are going that way, these are going that way, but this is a non-directional print. The flowers are everywhere and they make no sense. So when you overlap these arm side pieces there, you save in the width. If I would have put these flipped, like in the same way, I wouldn't have been able to fit these or in one length of fabric. So by doing that, I get the bodice in less than 50 centimeters, 19 inches. This is a small neckband that goes at the back and you cut two of them. The outer one, the one that you see is the one that's interfaced. In this case, my outer bands are made out of linen and my inner bands are made out of cotton. So it's really easy for me to distinguish them. So those are sewn on there with this shape going on. So the band has this shape there. So when you sew it together, it looks really, really bizarre, but that's how it's supposed to go. Now this isn't a facing. This is something that extends from the center of the dress. So it's not a facing, it's a band and it's got two. So this is the wrong sides up. You can see my seams there. These are the ones that are going to meet at the shoulder seams of the dress. These are the inner bands. I've cut these out of cotton. The outer bands I've cut out of linen. These aren't interfaced. This is the back neck bands as you can see. And these are the long ones that go on to the front of the dress. You can see notches there. These notches are the ones that match the dress here. So it's said to apply some stay tape on this area there to help stabilize. I don't have that. So I actually cut a little piece of interfacing with the same shape and I fuse that on. It's black so you can barely see that. So these are the ones that go attached there and there with a half an inch seam allowance and I've already shown you that on the outer bands. But that is how they look. When you put them wrong sides up, this little curve should come in like that. And these are the notches that will match the dress. I've got the dress assembled, all the princess seams, everything. That's the back center seam. The waist seam is there with the skirt full of pleats. All that's done. Now the neckline has all been stay stitched on the dress. The back there around here. All this front, it's all been protected. So now we have these bands. Now they're not facings. I repeat, they're not facings. <laughs> These bands are like an extension, so they bring the neckline up and they bring more width to the, the dress pieces there. So you can see that curve of the band follows the curve that the dress has, right? So I've already got these outer bands attached up there. So basically this big area of the band is what goes attached to the dress there. So I've got to just flip these put right sides together and now this curve here has these notches notches and the third notch here matches the waist seam and it's going to be quite strange to pin it all together due to the shape but once I've pinned it and sewn it they need some clipping done there so that you can open this because there is a curve there and press it well I have pinned and then hand basted the outer band to the dress I have kept a pin there where the shoulder seams are supposed to meet. When you turn it to the right side, you can see the shoulder seam there meets the band right there. And that has a, a whole bunch of curve there. And then this is how the dress is going to look. So this band sort of extends the dress further in. And then the, uh, the other band, the cotton one, is the one that's going to go attached onto here, right sides together and then flipped in. And it's sewn into there. So all this curved area there, once it's been sewn, needs to be clipped all around there so it can press well this curve right there. I've placed my inner band on top of the outer band, right sides together. This is the one I have already sewn on actually with my sewing machine with a half an inch seam allowance. I still haven't clipped or done any of that. I just want to get these bands together. So here you attach the band on the top part there. So for the outer band you attach it to the dress on the bottom one so on the wider bit that's the bit that goes onto the dress there but then to attach the inner band to the outer band you attach it there on the shorter end there. 
matching those shoulder seams there lots of pins I use lots of pins and then going all the way down there you can see the partially interfaced area I used to replace day tape because I don't have that so I'm gonna sew that on sew them both together and then I'm gonna tidy up all these seams in here clip I'm going to be pressing all the seams in like that so they're all going that way and then when this is already sewn this is going to come over fold that there and cover that seam hand baste that and sew it on looking at the wrong side of the front there there is a princess seam coming from the shoulder and here is the band this is the outer band the interfaced one that is wrong sides up and this is the concave area there now there's a first notch there and a second one there and this is the place where we need to do some clips so it says to do about four there and that's just to give this area that space you know to be able to conform to the shape this is my cotton one that's not interfaced wrong sides up again and there's that same notch that was on the other side this is the notch that's attached to the dress this is not attached to anything <laughs> and here as well gotta do some clips there so i'm gonna do that on both sides i have clip there now i have gone ahead and clipped on the outer edges here everywhere this is where these two are together shoulder seam the neck on top of there lots of clips and now i'm going to turn this band right sides out like that and i'm going to give this whole area a good press i've pressed the bands right sides out so here is the outer linen band it looks really nice it's been pressed everything now the inner band I did an extra step and that was to understitch if you can see the understitching right there it's going to keep that cotton inner band inside without it peeping out ever. Now I've got everything pressed like that. Now I could actually like serge the edges and then just top stitch there, top stitch it down or I could buy a spine the edges and top stitch it down. <laughs> But actually, I'm going to fold this to meet the seam there. I have trimmed the seams in there. So whenever the, the edge of the seam there, like that. So I'm going to do that all the way around the band. Hand baste and then top stitch it on. So there's going to be a narrow top stitch there. I hope that was helpful. Now I don't have the dress to show you like this, like I usually do, but I did film the whole detail of it hanging on a thing just the night before they left and that's what's coming now so you can see the details. I did it the same as I did the other one I'd made in the past with rayon and I did the contrast band in linen to give this area more stability, more firmness. You've already seen how I've constructed this. We chose these buttons because they were the only ones we had that sort of match. I always start a bit higher than what's marked on the pattern just for safety. And I always leave five and a half centimeters between each button, two and a quarter inches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen buttons. For mums, I chose to do the flared sleeve. It's like a flatter butterfly sleeve. It gives really good arm um, coverage that she really wanted. She prefers this type of sleeve to the really short cap sleeve. That was the other option and what I've done with my dress. For the hem, I've just surged, turned up and done a normal hem by machine. The bands are finished really neatly there. You can see the inside is the cotton, very soft for her. And you've seen how I've folded that under as I mentioned while I was constructing this, it's very neat on the other side. On the back there are lots of seams, there's a center seam on the back and the princess seams that come from the shoulders. And then two box pleats there on each side making four at the back, making this skirt really nice and flowy. This is how the band looks on the inside, super neat. 
all the hand basting was worth it it's very neat and the cotton there against the skin for my mom is just ideal she has very sensitive skin you can see the princess seams there on the front at the top is where I do a small narrow shoulder adjustment the same I've done for me I've done for her and I've had to take it in at the waist after trying it on like the final try on so from the half an inch seam allowance it's three eighths of an inch in and I've just left that excess there just in case <laughs> so here's the final look of the dress it's very elegant I think in this print the contrast patterns gives it something special across the middle and this dress is two inches longer than what I made mine because mum likes it below the knee it's a very nice full skirt very flowy and looks amazing on her here is my mum, and as you can see her swishing around in the skirt you can tell she's super happy to have a swishy skirt I didn't tell her to do that she's doing that spontaneously to show the the flowiness and the volume of the skirt you can see the pleats at the back she's chosen the flared sleeve option in mine I did the cap sleeves and she likes these better and the length is a bit longer than mine look how nice the neckline looks and that linen band just gives the contrast and structure that that area needs this is a midi skirt the length that she prefers all the time she's chosen to put a belt on it because she likes doing that that's why she even brought a belt with her and it's just a gorgeous dress that she can wear for years to come and look amazing in If you want to see a full pattern review about the sizing and all the different aspects and to see my original version you can also look at the video I put up in March. I will link it in the cards and down in the description box. As always thank you so much for joining me. I will have another video for you tomorrow. I am really excited about it and just yeah just keep your eyes peeled for that. Have a look at more videos on the channel. As always I invite you to spend some time here watching hundreds of videos for your sewing entertainment. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye!